Back at TCT Show 2018, I had the opportunity to talk to Dyes Design, an engineering company based out of Montreal, Canada, who aim to produce high quality and high performance hot ends and extruders, like the Dyes Extruder Pro and the Dyes N Pro, which I have here. The question is, what makes an extruder high performance and high quality? Well, let's have a look. Hello everyone, my name's Adam and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Dyes Extruder Pro and the Dyes Hot End Pro, an extruder and hot end from Dyes Design. Now, this video is going to be a preview, so a look at the features, materials and engineering aspects that go into this extruder and hot end that make them a little bit different to most other things. I wouldn't normally do this, but as this kind of kit seems a little bit exceptional, I thought it'd be worth taking a look at. Bear in mind, at this point, I have done absolutely no testing, so I have no idea if it's any good. That doesn't mean it will be or won't be, I just don't know yet. So I won't be making any recommendations, this is just a kind of an overlook of the engineering aspects and special materials used in this design. First off, let's take a look at the hot end, starting with the nozzle. The nozzles for the Dyson Pro are made out of tungsten carbide. Now tungsten alloy is a metallic material, however tungsten carbide is a ceramic material. It's about twice as stiff and double the density of steel, so very rigid and very heavy. But most importantly, it's hard very hard, meaning you can print any material. And as well as that, it also has great thermal conductivity on par approximately with brass. So the kind of performance that you get with brass is normally very good, but it's quite soft. So tungsten to carbide is like as good as brass, but also really, really hard. So it won't kind of wear out over time when you're printing very abrasive filaments. So excellent. It's also great in terms of temperature resistance. So this goes up to 500 degrees Celsius and that tungsten carbide will not have an issue with that. You'll also notice the kind of metallic shine on the nozzle, which you wouldn't get from the ceramic material. It's in fact an electroless nickel plating, which is basically a low friction plating coating, if you like, which covers the whole nozzle, including the inside. The inside is where it's important to get a low friction movement between the plastic and the nozzle, meaning you have basically better flow and less back pressure for better print results. Above the nozzle we have a sealing washer. The sealing washer makes a seal between the nozzle and the heat block, which is useful because you don't want plastic oozing out all over the place. However, this washer is no ordinary washer. It's made of Inconel. Inconel is an austenitic nickel chromium super alloy. Yes, it's quite a fancy material. The use of this super alloy means that you have great sealing properties all the way up to the 500 degrees Celsius that you can get with this nozzle. Also though, this large M10 thread and that sealing washer means that you don't actually have to heat the nozzle up in order to change the nozzle. So I'll definitely be keeping an eye on that in the review for how well that works. Of course, next we have the heat block, which to most might seem a kind of insignificant part. It's just a block that holds some other things, but it's actually quite interesting. This one uses a quite unconventional material, steel, because the high temperature capabilities of steel means that it will retain its strength as you get up to 500 degrees Celsius, as other materials may melt or soften. If you look very closely, you'll notice a couple of extra details in the design. For example, all the sharp edges have been chamfered off to a 45 degree angle to reduce the heat loss from the block. Above the heat block, we have the transition tube or heat break. And in this case, it's made out of, you guessed it, no you didn't, titanium coated in ceramic. Titanium has a very low thermal conductivity, which is excellent here because you don't want thermal energy traveling or transitioning from the heat block or hot end to the cold end, which is where the heat sink is. You wanna have a sharp uh, transition from cold to hot which a titanium material will allow. The ceramic coating reduces the internal friction, which in turn allows for easier retraction and then slightly better flow characteristics. Next, we have the fan and heatsink, which is kind of the bulk in terms of size. Uh, it does have a rubber mount between the fan and the heatsink, but it is quite a full, a full fan, a small fan, so I'm expecting it to be a little bit noisy. We'll see that in the review. For now, let's move on to the Dyes Extruder Pro. First things first, we have toolless hot end removal. 
a small thumb screw at the top of the extruder, a latch that holds it in, and some cable connectors, and that's it. It's removed. I'm not totally sure why this is that useful, but I mean, during the review, hopefully I'll get a little bit of use and we'll try the removable functionality and see how useful it is. Before we take a look at the really interesting stuff on the inside, one other feature on the outside is this latch at the top. Now you obviously have this is the spring. That is a fixed spring, but you also have this extra latch on the side, which allows you to lock it in place. So it makes input and removal of filament a lot easier because you don't have to hold that spring while you do it. You can then release it, job done. The 5.65 to one gear ratio, yep, it's that specific, is achieved using high strength, hardened steel, to allow for low friction operation through hundreds of kilograms of filament being printed in extreme conditions. Those extreme conditions probably don't include rain. The spring tension isn't adjustable, but apparently that's actually not what you want. It's been designed for optimal pressure at the filament to ensure constant flow output, even with various different filaments. The teeth are totally redesigned compared to the previous version of the Dyes extruder and actually look like nothing I've seen before on an extruder. They are quite a unique shape. Apparently, they've been specially designed for high pushing force without damaging the roundness of the filament, which sounds sensible, so let's hope that works quite well. I mean, they do look really cool, so let's just hope they function well too. The teeth are mounted, well, no, strictly speaking, part of the dual pinch drive system. So if you're familiar with the Bontex style of an extruder where you have two driven gears that push the filament down, it's just like that. Apparently these dual pinch gears have been designed specifically to ensure that during long prints with lots of retraction, you don't damage the filament during those many retraction movements. Of course, that filament is fully guided out of the extruder, allowing no other exit apart from through the melt zone podcast. I mean, hot end. Again, everything has a low friction coating to reduce the back pressure and they're all requiring lower force from the motor. And last but not least, there are a couple of mounting options like the screws on the side and the kind of ridges in the heatsink allowing a plate or interface mount, which is also super nice. That is, if you have any money left to buy a printer after you've purchased one of these. So that's pretty much it for the Dyzen Pro and Dyz Extruder Pro. Now, of course, all of these fancy materials and crazy designs don't mean anything if the performance is bad. So make sure you get subscribed and turn on notifications so you know when that review goes live and then you'll know how good the performance actually is. That will be coming in just a couple of weeks. The Dyz Extruder Pro, Dyz Hardened Pro, and a couple of extra nozzles were provided to me by Dyz Design but no money has changed hands. As always, a special thank you to everyone who provides support to the channel on a monthly basis. If you think what I'm doing is worthwhile and would like to support it, please do so via Patreon at the link in the video description. Also in the description, you'll find some links to articles on Wikipedia that will help explain some of the materials and special properties of some of the things I've started to explain here. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and want to see more. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more behind the scenes and stuff like that. And I will see you in the next one. Cool. Fourth attempt, nailed it. <laughs>